Mark is going to take reds as well. I, I actually prefer yellows here, personally. Play the, take yellows there and you can play the bottom left yellow and you can bump into the red and yellow together. You're guaranteed to be on a ball and then you can get out. And Mark could have played the yellow in the bottom end of the table. Might go and try and break it out now while well, there's another red down there. Yeah, very good. Oh, what a shot. Yeah. Much better than using the one I suggested because you could go into it guaranteeing yourself being on this one. And what a bonus that he's on the one he's just cannoned into as well. May take it now. Keep always work together. Could go another way though. Yeah, I can make. I can absolutely agree with you. I think the one on the bottom cushion then might become a hard ball to get onto, but I think you have to take it now because your other option is to take the one in the middle, which is your good connected to it. So you'd have to connect from the top of the table. So I like this, and that's perfect. Totally different sport and totally different game, but in any sporting sense, there is no substitute, none at all, for the confidence that comes from the winning. And Mark Allen will be absolutely flush with it at the moment. No doubt about it. And he goes one nil in front. Smooth finish. If you do lose your first match, there's still a chance to get through. More than ever. So Mark Allen with the first opportunity can take on the yellows and all the yellows have a pocket. And it comes down to the root. A little bounce here is perfect. Just starting to work it out now. He's going to have to just play on the one to the right centre. Wants a little angle just to be able to, yeah, perfect little angle, just to drift up to the middle of the table. enough angle just to bump into the red if not can he get to the cushion which actually would maybe give him a better angle on the yellow to the top left shade too much angle he's played that so well yeah that's a delightful cannon that, that was way too much angle I had to do something and he's come up with a great cannon. Yeah, that was absolutely as played there, potted into the thick part of the pocket. Got his line absolutely flawless. Flush the yellow, nicely paced. That was a really, really good clearance for Mark Allen. Now that the foul has been played, the it's no longer the shot after yes. the break, so Mark does have cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. He can play that shot. Yeah, like and handily, Carl had already done a little bit of his work for him. Yeah, exactly. I can this, this, the funny thing is that I can understand what was going through Mark Allen's head there. He was probably slightly a little bit worried. Said, what was that for? And, and am I okay to put it where, <laughs> where, wherever I want? So it's one of those uh, just very confusing because of you know and that's why the right smile on Carl's face because that's just a, a, a poor error really, and uh, and he knows it. And it's probably well, it wasn't going to cost him. He wasn't going to go for the finish. He was just going to play a tactical shot following his first shot. But you're absolutely right, Stephen. But what, the minute he played his, it actually opened up everything for Mark just to make the clearance. Oh, maybe a bit of a, a sense of justice for Mark Allen as a fantastically hit break does in the end, resulting in winning the frame. Just going to play the plant to open things up on yellows. I think this yellow goes down the right side here. I think he's on it perfect. Yeah, the yellow does it. The one just below it, does that go? If not, does he play this one just off the red, just to open up the pocket? Just a little bump, a little feather off it. No, he plays it clean. That tells me that yellow probably goes. Yeah, it, it does it, look like it on the main camera. It does. In which case, this is fairly routine. Ooh, could have done with another another turn of the cue ball there just to be absolutely straight in and then he would have been 
pretty much out. Just has to play off a shot here. It's still the right shot. Just play it, just control the cue ball. A bit more pace, maybe. He's got a slightly strange route here. And Grimace, because he's on the cushion. He, he was absolutely fine. Now. A simple enough position yeah. shot. <laughs> it went just. Oh, that jaw's lovely. That is a lovely, lovely nudge. It's a great pot. The nudge it helps. I think it'd have been good without the nudge anyway, but the nudge is nice. How's good to this? How good is this? <laughs> the pistol showing off the full repertoire. That is some positional shot. And Mark Allen shows us what he's capable of with a fantastic 4 0 win over Carl Morris in the rankings, which is, uh, well, not bad going at all. Yeah, story of the week. another story of the weekend is that McHill's been knocked off the top. Chris Melling now the number one player. Oh, what a hammer of a break again from Mark Allen. Oh, goodness me. He really is just squaring up that front ball. This is what he was doing at the Players' Championship. Break in every time like this. He thought he was going to be kicked into the corner pocket. But it's okay. There are so many really, 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 really good pool players who have given an awful lot for that break on a consistent basis. Oh, there is. There really is. And it has been consistent. Of course, small sample size. Mark's only played a couple of tournaments on the small table with Ultimate Pool, but as Simon rightly mentions, every time we've seen it, it is so impressive. And as a lot of people say, most important shot in the game. Left himself a lovely angle here just to drift across the table. Allen. And, 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 and his, his snooker accomplishment, so. Yeah, it's different to Mark Selby, who's we saw in the pairs on Monday, who's got a huge background in the sport, a former world champion. For Mark, he has played the game, uh, played for Northern Ireland on a few occasions, he does play the odd tournament with some friends, but for him it's always been something just a way, he's got a lot of friends that play the game. Um, never sort of had a serious crack at it at all it's always been snooker for him so that's where uh, he has some experience but nowhere near the level of, of Mark Selby so it's going to be fascinating to see how he gets on in terms of understanding the patterns and the sort of physics of the cue ball and that yeah, side of things and I think I think a lot of people kind of nice shot there I think people don't understand the fact that the likes of Quinton and the likes of Mark Selby and uh, Tom Ford a, a few years back um, you know, one or two of the other snooker pros, well, Andy Lee's played on the main tour. They played a lot of pool. You know, they played the Great Yarmouth, the Interleague, the, you know, and all that they... So it's a little bit unfair to kind of say, oh, it's a snooker player playing pool, because they did play a lot of pool. Um, in Mark's case, I, 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 I don't know how much he's played. Um, he's took these lovely, though, I must say, first off. Um, 
this is what we're up against. It's going to be a, a long weekend. Yeah, it's a beautiful start. Straight off here. Would, would, would mark like the, the yellow onto the red and, and follow the yellow in, which would obviously give him a great opportunity to clear the yellows. Um, you know, again, it, it, it may not be a shot that he's, you know, 100% sure of in terms of of the game because he was on it as good as he was going to get on it then to be honest I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Mark maybe pop the one into the yellow into the middle and come down and pop the red I think that would be more um, a little bit straight here he's landed a bit straight there yeah it's one of the things he was wary of so he was on ultimate pool extra this week uh, and he was talking about the fact that he's been practicing with Ron McCarthy and a few other players um, and actually in terms of some of the tactical side of things in terms of what we're talking about here one problem to solve he, he's not quite got to grips with um, so this is definitely something he was worried about looks like he's playing on it oh that little nudge won't do him any harm he may yeah he's gonna he's gonna play it so he's fully aware of what's going on oh, that's nice. lovely nice interesting for me that he left it late rather than doing it early because he was on it early but purposely left it as late as he has another lovely finish very nice indeed you know the quality of the balls the cloth the cushions the lighting the heating you know all these different things um, it does lend itself to playing more more champagne pool you know um, so it's a, I think there's I think there's a lot of games and a lot of sports where it's hard to kind of gauge the different eras purely because of the equipment changes you know it's like comparing Beyond Borg with you know Pete Sampras well how can Beyond Borg win with a, with a wooden racket you know or they talk about the darts averages and the stems and the flights and the darts so much technology goes into these darts now you know um, but it's certainly a different mindset um, and it's not easy coming from an era where you do kind of think a little bit safety first but Mark's having a, making a good fist of these draw back to his hand I think played the black in the corner yeah nicely played Yep. Very nice. Very, very good. 3 1 up. Emma had a chance there. The assessment has to be over two seasons, three seasons, five seasons, ten seasons, whatever, whatever you, you decide that it is. Because primarily, eventually, there will be a right and wrong shot. And it might not get highlighted over the season, it might not get highlighted over two seasons, but it'll get highlighted over ten seasons. So if you take the same principle at snooker in the break building department, if you don't go into the cluster of the reds at the right time, pick them off correctly or whatever, you know, like a top snooker player would explain it to you better than me, then you're going to get a lot of 60-70 breaks. If you do it properly, those 60-70s turn into 90-100 breaks. But unless you truly understand the game, you're not really going to see that. You ask Mark Allen that question later on, he's going to totally, totally get and explain it 100% yeah. because he totally gets it. Um, but I think that's where the rankings come into play. And I know what you're saying, a season or two, but I think what we see is that the players that, that will end up at the top of the rankings year in, year out are the players that um, can make the game as easy as possible for themselves, which then comes down to the sort of the patterns and the processes and stuff like that. Um, You'll have other players that will step up and win the tournaments here and there. Um, but if, in terms of improving and, and getting yourself right to the top of the rankings, I think you need that side of it as well. Um, but I think just, you know, I, I, think, I think it's fair to say that... that that Mark's been nice and steady and he's done what he's had to do and but but in terms of what you were saying before I mean you know it takes you a long time to learn the mental side of this game it takes you like kind of to control your nerves and control 
the trials and tribulations of it you know I get asked a lot like who's the best players and whatever else and you know Mark Selby and Quinton Han's name comes up a lot and Mark Selby and Quinton Han was fantastic at pool no but oh you know they were superb um, just give Mark his uh, victory lap here and I'll shut up yeah and there it is if not the weakest part of his game is his break and uh, he's going to need to fire because if he leaves Mark opportunities, Mark will swallow them up. Yeah, he's not, he's not missing missing much. Um, I think he missed one ball in open play against me that I could remember. Yeah, it could be a factor. If, um, if Roland's break's not working, then that could be a factor in this game. Could make it a lot closer than we think, than we think it's going to be. He just cues through the ball. That's beautiful. Really nice, doesn't that really is so well judged. He's finished pretty straight here. He's not going to be able to get as close as he wants to. He's screwing off the cushion. To and maybe able to yeah, screw back and come down table. He's got the pace of the table oh, really quickly as well. Ever. Didn't think he could uh, get as nicely on this as he has. Just made them look simple. And it's the pistol. The pros on ultimate pull. It really is. Also fabulous to it. And I think it's only a matter of time before maybe one or two of the, um, the American pool players, you think, find their way across the, the pond yeah I think the, the uh, rule set will help um, the, the, the American players yeah, that's uh, well, my world thought. players Chinese players come yeah. across and, and adapt um, you know it, it, it's a big difference f f from other rule sets to, to players in Britain but when, when you look far afield um, these rules suit those players yeah, there are already players who who like to apply their trades in, in other sports, notably players like uh, Corey Jewell, um, Alex Pagelion. You can see um, maybe players like that who have obviously have a, a knowledge of the rule set already and, um, and don't mind trying out other sports. Yeah, I, th I think it, it would be great to have it, have that um, sort of breed of player as well, wouldn't it? Um, and y you see sort of our guys here um, travel abroad, you know, Carl, Boyce, uh, Gareth in China, but Chris, Mick, they, they've all been there, done that. Um, so it would be nice to see them players come across and, and try the small balls. Straight down to them. Huge. Now the only, yeah, I was going to say, I want to leave the ball in the middle of the table to the last to get down onto the eight ball. The eight ball just presents a tiny bit of a problem in that. It only really goes into that uh, centre pocket, so you have to make sure that you get position on the last ball. It must go in the corner. Yeah, it goes goes to the bottom corner. Yeah. Top it through. Yeah. Just just had the wrong angle though, but a favourable kiss just glances it on the way past and uh, a little cut back. Just mind the way. Very nice clearance. Mark can pick his spot for toughest ball on the table which is this yellow that's tied up big advantage having ball in hand anywhere on the table so the one you can see in the uh, in the opening ball passes between the yellow and red so I can just drift the cue ball up 
What's a little angle? It's a bit straight, but I think you can just punch down. Mm. Yeah, could have done with that one just holding up and a little bit more angle, but still can't seem to get it. Cue ball just needs to kill it. Oh, didn't kill it. He's still on the thin cut, but even if he is, where's the cue ball going? If he is, he might be able to check through the gap of the yellow and the eight ball back out, but... Oh, he's... Cool. I think he's just okay. He's playing it in the bottom right. Great shot. Shot. His cue action is ideal for them sort of bitey, nippy shots you got to play sometimes. I think Mark will look to route through these fairly quickly. Just got to mind his work on the three reds in the bottom half of the table. He's a little bit short here. I think he wanted to be just off straight to run around the back of the reds. I think he's got to try and be cute here and maybe just brush the yellow ball in the middle of the two reds. Well, I think I'm better suited to the commentary box than the pool <laughs> table, Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. He's got a he's got the right angle just to just to drift down. Probably gonna yeah, a little bump. Perfect. Yeah, he's played that really well. It's quite impressive, even I thought with watching Mark Selby the other night, obviously playing snooker, then coming to a ball table. Both their touch when they need to be really neat and tidy in small areas has been really impressive. And he, ironically enough, he played in the B team for Northern Ireland or Ireland. But I think he was there more socially more than the pool. Yeah. That's another great split. I wasn't sure if he could have took the yellow he was closest to there it was a tougher pot but it was virtually the eight ball the way the yellows are sat yeah yeah better rewards for certain these these reds are a mess left a decent angle here I think it was after this position on the one to middle on his previous shot but just came up short so that's nice that's a great shot yeah and left a good angle as well it's still going to be difficult he's still got to navigate one at the top of the table and then on the side that's interesting yeah I'm surprised he went that way but he needs to find the gap now between those two yellows is he just going to leave a long tricky red he may he may yeah indeed he has position virtually takes care of itself if he yeah. makes the pot yeah I like that shot actually it's um, just back yourself to, to drop this one in how's the kiss That's not oh, ideal. great either middle the cue ball's doing some mileage I think you go left middle as you look but is he playing off the yellow ball? 
is. Oh. Wow. And he's left the Reds in perfect position if Mark gets out into the middle of the table, which he has done. Left a nice angle as well. Just touch that yellow. Yeah. That's perfect. It's interesting, there's quite a few snooker players starting to get interested in having a go at the ultimate pool. Yeah, yeah, it makes you wonder where where that, that goes next. Who else we're gonna see coming across? Really is great to see. Oh, golden it's break. It's a golden break. That's the first one we've seen. I think Eddie sort of feels that sums his day up. It really does. The first one we have seen today, and it goes the way. Oh, kicked in. Oh. <laughs> ah, brilliant. I said, I'm going to cut break, Josh. Where's the cue will go? And he told me where to put the white, and I cut break and golden break and <laughs> made, the, made the eight ball. <laughs> So not only was he getting them, he was assisting them as well. Well, what a break that is. Big break from Mark. Another one. We keep saying it. But there is a cluster. Yeah, I think the the red goes, but the uh, the bottom red of the three at the top goes. But the one on the yellow doesn't. So we'll have to play a little controlled cannon. Straight away, he's looked to get low on that red. He'd like to have been just off straight so he could brush the yellow out of the way. Yeah, I think this is probably still okay because he, he should just be able to play it dead weight and just nudge the... Oh, he doesn't want to come back together. I was going to say he's, he's guaranteed to be on the one to middle, but... He's happy. It goes. Does it go. really? His wow. cameras are really deceptive, aren't I they? I would have said for the world that that doesn't pass yeah, the yellow. Yeah, you. Only wow. his body language told me it went that's amazing the pistol it's been a good performance it has to be said and he didn't hang about yeah and the pistol showing he's got all the shots and he'll be cheering Mick on to get just a point against Emma and that's him yep. through. Yep. That's to be understanded as he was already top of the group. Uh, Eight ball. And we're going to oh. start with a golden break. Mark Allen, he was the first player to get a golden break yesterday. He is the first player to get a golden <laughs> break today. And we are one shot into our Sunday action here. And we have one frame on the board. How about that for a start? And from the front ball as well, it's very rare. Much more likely to see that from the from the cut break, but oh, eight ball flying again. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to give it a little bit of body link English to turn it in, but how well did he hit this break? I mean, he absolutely flushes it and watch the cue ball right up the middle of the table. Exactly what he's trying to do. If he does that all day, he'll be a handful. That's three breaks we've seen so far and uh, three absolute specimens. If you could bottle them up and sell them, you'd make a lot of money. Big question for me here. Does the yellow on the left-hand side pass the red to the bottom left-hand corner? If it does, then this is a pretty wide-open opportunity and I don't think it does the way he's aligning this one up. No, I don't think so. It will now. Yeah, beautiful little touch there. That was really well judged. Just 
just needs to get the right shape on the one to middle the next ball after this he's going to play it long understandably so he's left a good angle just to punch the cue ball across so following up his first frame golden break with a breaking clearance in his second. I say that because the red closest to the bulk line on the left hand side doesn't have a pocket. He was pretty much forced into going reds there because no way of putting the yellow on the bottom rail and getting the cue ball out. So what's the plan for the red on the left rail. It's got an angle now. Again, a lovely shot. Very nice. It was easy to get that one wrong. It was the shot onto the one in the middle to give himself a good angle to then knock it out. Played those two shots really well. Just travelled a, a roll further than ideal here, just slightly bigger angle, which means he's going to have to navigate the two yellows. He does so, just slightly hamper queuing here, but again, nothing to do with the cue ball, so it shouldn't pose a problem at all. You can just drop it in and run the cue ball on and off the side cushion, and that leaves a natural angle just to stun off one cushion, just above the middle pocket. And he's just come straight down the table, taking those Taking those two yellows out of play, just left, left himself a slightly trickier eight ball, but understandably so. Very good. A big service at the moment. Yeah, this is where the tactical side of things for Mark Allen are going to be tricky. He's been openly talking about the fact that it's this sort of situation that he's going to struggle with to fully... Uh, understand what the best thing to do to try and open up these frames are, are. For me, I wonder whether a loss of turn shot on the to the top right whilst trying to keep it safe is the way to go, but it's not easy to find a safe area of the table in playing that shot. And when you can't work out what to do tactically, sometimes you end up just going, well, let's just go, go gung-ho and try and yeah. make the clearance. I, I think he doesn't want to be potting balls here. I think the, the the shot was the one that you mentioned. If he if he planted the red onto the yellow and then brings the cue ball down this end of the table, he only needed to hide one yellow. Left the red over the pocket. It would have um, left Luke in some trouble. But he is going for it. Yeah, and the red on the right-hand side, that's in a prime position for a double once you get rid of the red on the left-hand side which could well be the last ball. You take the one to the left centre, one down the left corner and just bring the cue ball back an inch or two. So he's actually worked these out beautifully. This would be some clearance if he, if he makes it. Got it. Some going in the six, if you lose the second set, you're in a six or a shootout. And then if you if you do lose the opening set, it's almost hard to mentally get yourself pre prepared for the fact you've got a winner, a long set, and then a six or a shootout to go through. Makes the opening set so important. What a break! Oh, this. I mean, the game is just so easy when you can break like this. Look at this. Look at this layout. I mean, I don't want to take it too far, but I'd fancy myself with these. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't fancy me for them. No, no wouldn't fancy me either. But um, no, it is impressive to see the break, isn't it? It really is. You could have made a, a good case for both colour sets here, but not a surprise to see him take yellows.
It's going to be yellow to left centre and the eight ball is going to go into the right centre and um, just all from the break. If he executed it. So a ch second chance here for Mark Allen. He'd love to leave the red over the top left-hand corner as his connection from the one at the bottom of the table. He's not going to be able to get right behind the one to the bottom left. So it's a big pot coming up here, but he's just going to be dropping it in, giving it every opportunity. Yeah, nothing to do with the cue ball, which helps his shot a great deal. Can just focus 100% on the pot and just roll it down the rail. That did make that shot a lot easier. As soon as you've got to punch that shot in, or play it with any kind of pace to get the cue ball out, it makes it infinitely more difficult. So that's, uh, that's another big frame. Yeah, obviously playing the percentages and um, that may have worked in his favour. Do you know, some of that may come from um, practising with Ronan as well, because Ronan would often, often talk about just playing the percentages and get it, getting it in your favour. Like okay. nobody plays the percentages better. No. Very good at it. What a set we've got going on here. This is incredible. This is going to hell, hell, you see. It, well, um, it, it is, but we he's still got to get over the line here. That red at the bottom of the table looks easy, but when does he take it? What's he playing on afterwards? Uh, I'm, I'm marking this one up. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, there shouldn't be any problems from here. Needs this to pull up. That's perfect, that's fine. That's what you want. work these out nicely so we are going all the way to the hill seven frames each Mark Allen will break in the decider it's um it's the only he's almost spoiled for choice yeah he's yeah good, he's probably thinking well, how do I make this easy but this is this is the the toughest ball because it, it doesn't go to top right it's hampered both sides he had to get that one off the table first he could have played that and rested into the red make this this one easier but it's okay yeah so for me there's one shot to play and that's just hitting the gap to the one by his hand in three after three yellows at the bottom of the table and you won't have to move the cue ball far Oh, Luke, he will be absolutely devastated. Well, he might take them now, but for me, I'd want to be here in one shot's time. I don't mind this, actually. The the one over the pocket just leaves Still works a simple last position ball, for the eight. Yeah. You, can't, you can't fail to get on it, and then you can't fail to get on the eight ball. Oh, what a set of pull we have seen here. Brilliant from both players. Drama at the end. <laughs> 15 second shot clock in play. That just got Mark up off the table for a second. And it's there. Mark Allen gets the first set on the board. Eight frames to seven. Luke Gilbert had his opportunities. He did not take it. Is there an angle there to pot the red to top right and screw down into that other red? The only problem is you've got to hit it with some. Some real power. He's elected not to. He's going to play a double. Is the yellow not in the way of the double? No, it wasn't. A great shot. How much does that change the dynamic of the frame? It looks a tricky layout for Mark Allen. All of a sudden, makes a double, and now it looks one like he, one he should get. Has left himself just a shade too much angle on this red at the top. Oh, two in one two and one and he's still on the other one so <laughs> that's not as he played it that is for sure but he is on this spread to the bottom left hand corner oh, 
Oh, he's pulling out all the shots now. He needs another one, though. This is by no means easy. Playing from that knuckle. Ooh. Yellow going in is absolutely fine. More than legal shot there. Knew that he was potentially leaving the table in a reasonable condition, but he probably felt that on the previous visits when he sat down. What can Mark Allen do this time? There's only one problem to really solve. Does the red squeak past the yellow to the top left-hand corner? I was just looking at that myself and wondering. It doesn't look like it does, but these angles for me, uh, uh, they've deceived me. They've caught me out a few times this weekend. They don't look like they do, and then they just fly past. It's one of those, if the red was a bit further out, it would probably be more helpful because you can generate pace and squeeze the cue ball into the cushion. But um, from that angle, I don't know. The way he's gone about this finish, I can only assume it does. Yeah, it suggests it must do. Like I say, it can get made to look fairly foolish. Just, just got there, I think. That was um, threading the needle. There we go. That tells you that it does go. Fairly comfortably in the end. <laughs> <laughs> what do we know? Well, great start to the set for Mark Allen. Two mistakes from Luke Gilbert, both of them punished with counter clearances. 2 0 ahead. opening shot no oh did drop wow that was that was generous <laughs> <laughs> yeah for the life of me I didn't think that was going to go with it as soon as the ball set off, but I mean, he gave it every opportunity yeah. to drop, but it's still Played one of those right. that you you're massively shocked to see fall in. And now in good shape. Lovely little nudge on the yellow, a shot ago, two shots ago now, but just to nudge it that fraction, just to make it comfortable to get to it into this pocket. The eight yep. is just guarded slightly on one side, so he can't take a liberty with his positional play. Cuba needs to just be towards the right-hand side. Yeah, that's fine, he can just screw back well, pretty much to where the cue ball is now. He's just got an angle to just punch on and off the top cushion. So, he establishes a two-frame lead, and then he plays one bad shot, just jabs at a ball, and um, it loses him, unravels all that hard work that he's done, loses him the frame, loses him the set. And also you throw into that the hard work of yesterday as well, which we talked about earlier on. Exactly. You know, does that play a factor in terms of how well he qualified and almost some, not something to protect, but he's coming into it in a different way this time than perhaps previous situations but this is why the game is just so brutal it's um everything he's done is is just overshadowed by that that one shot it's just yeah and he's got an opponent Horrible. that is playing his best stuff of the weekend yeah this is as good as we've seen from mark you can see it almost a, an extra bounce in the step and an extra bit of confidence around the table. He, he feel like he's under some confidence in that he's got 
much more control in what he's doing with the cue ball out there now. Okay, just pulled yeah, up. Yeah. He looks like the favourite at the moment to uh, be our first finalist. But Luke Gilbert just has to know that uh, he's played some great stuff to get here. He just needs to recreate that and find it again. But it's going to be a bit, bit of an uphill battle now. He needs seven. Nothing Luke Gilbert can do from the comfort of his chair. He needs chances. He needs table time. And uh, he's not going to get it if Mark Allen keeps breaking like this. This, again, just a, a couple of clusters on the table. Yellow's look the choice it's just whether he has an opener yeah it doesn't look obvious no he's having to bend this one round I oh, could know he could get through direct he was okay tried to just get the cue ball over and kick the red out of the top of the table he didn't do it so he's going to have to have another go at that There is a. Oh, he played it really well. I was going to say there is another ball further down the table, closer to the, the left centre that he could have played off that yellow, but he had a nice angle just to come over and play the cannon. And again, that's um, been a feature of his game today. When he's had to break out a ball, he's done it really well. Really does seem to have much better control of the cue ball today this is a different Mark Allen we're, we're seeing this is one that um, is feeling more at home and more used to the way the cue ball is reacting yesterday was um, a learning experience for him today is putting it into practice brilliant stuff He's absolutely flying right now. As all the four previous groups have been won by the, um, the group leader. That is actually quite an interesting statistic. Hadn't even thought about that before. Lovely break from Mark. If Luke was hoping for a dry one, another opportunity. It's not coming off the break. He'll need a mistake from Mark Allen. Reds. I did wonder if this red passed the two at the top of the table, and it does. It makes things much easier. So you'll just, it's a, it's a lovely pattern actually. You can just take the two at the top and uh, just work the cue ball down, the two in the middle of the table. It's going to be the one to uh, left centre first, and the one to right centre. The natural angle to come down the table for the red at the bottom. frame as well it's not beyond the realms of possibility that's the last shot he plays in yeah. this year's players championship yeah you've got to feel from really it's all the whole weekend has just turned and unraveled on on one shot at seven each in the in the first set it would been a entirely different match if um if he'd have made that shot and made the clearance he would have won that first set and been in control
got the match that Luke Gilbert planned in his mind, but uh, he can take a lot away from this weekend. Let's not quite write him off yet, but uh, it does look like it's heading that way. Looked like he'd left a bad angle, but just pinched it to get the angle he needs on this yellow. He actually gave himself a little bit too much angle, which is why he's flicked the red, but that's actually worked out okay. The eight ball is still tricky to get nicely on. It is. It's, it's even tricky to get nicely on from the, the yellow that's just below it as well. It's surrounded by three reds. He's, he's left the best angle. Just drift the cue ball into the yeah, little flick on the red. It leaves it perfect for the right centre. This is to put Mark Allen on the hill. Oh, cue goes up. <laughs> Indicates straight away that he got a kick. <laughs> yeah, great clash. Really looking forward to that one. It is a great clash, and um, and it promises to be a great final as well because um, if Mark does go on and win here, is it? Looks like he probably will. Certainly after that break. <laughs> oh, what a break! <laughs> He's going to smash through the finish line here. Yeah, and um, Mark on this form, breaking this well, is going to prove a harmful for anybody. And uh, we we know that whether it's Ronan or Mick, it's going to be a formidable opponent um, with with masses of experience. But um, Mark has shown what he's all about here. We always knew that he can do it on a snooker table, and he's proven to us today that he can recreate it on a pool table. This is an exceptional performance. That's off to Luke Gilbert, though. He can take a lot of credit from this weekend. It won't feel that way at the moment, but on reflection, he had a wonderful day yesterday. It just uh, didn't happen for him here. Brilliant performance in the end from Mark Allen. An excellent second set. Yeah. Is it, it's interesting. A lot of people talk about the pockets play quite generous with the, the brand new cloth and the brand new balls and everything else, but they tend to be playing more generous off the, the near jaw than the far jaw as that yellow stayed on the table from the far jaw. So first time we see Mark Allen with hand on the table in this match, and it's a good one. It's a very good chance. I think this afternoon against Luke Gilbert, obviously a lot was made of the deciding frame in the first set, but the second set he absolutely flew. And it was the first time this weekend we've seen him really get to grips with the cue ball and really control these finishes rather than sort of having to react to not quite being able to put the cue ball where he wants to. Yeah, I think he's going to take he's going to take this it's kind of um, clockwise as um, we looked at the balls then so the one at the bottom then this one next one's going to be the ball to left middle then right middle leaving the one down the right hand side as the last ball so always doing it doing a 360 of balls here. They were almost in a, in a circle. He's just looking at the possibility of rerouting there, only just because he's just picked up the wrong angle on this. He can, he can still kill it, though. Just would have liked to have been just the other side of this ball, but it's absolutely fine. Lovely. Well, the trade of blows and reverse clearances. 1-1. One, one. He had um, trials for a couple of big teams. I think Nottingham Forest was one of them. But, um, he was... He found that um, he suited the, the table more than the pitch. Still loves his football, though. I know that he was sort of scrambling around in between sessions, trying to find somewhere to watch the football this afternoon. So, he made a ball off the break for the first time in the match. Yeah, it's a decent layout here.
Red is the choice. Leaves the two in the top half of the table for his last two. You could make a case for getting rid of the one over the top left with his first shot and leaving the other one as a direct pot to the top left. But if he leaves them both up there, use the one near the pocket to get on the other one. But the yellow could get become a little bit of a blocker. Yeah, I think he's tried to, to get somewhere across there now. It'd be my choice to leave those two on the left-hand side until last, but maybe forced to now. He did say during his interview, I noticed with you earlier, that um, sometimes he's, uh, you know, he, he backs himself. He's got he's got that um, almost like a, a an ego where he backs himself to get through any gap. So if there's a tricky shot where a, a, a pool player would naturally leave it to... Um, or try to get it out as his, his first shot. Mark doesn't mind leaving it to his last shot because he backs himself to get them. And uh, he's left this... He left it, left, left it tricky, but... Yeah, he wanted to be straight in on this. And it's, this is the reason, exact reason, I thought, of getting rid of the one over the top left first shot. Leave the one that's there now, because he had one over the left centre pocket, which he could have used to connect to this as his final two balls, and then you're straight in on the eight ball. Uh, but... He's gone this way about and should still get out here. Lovely pot to the corner there. Good nudge. You, you can be sure of one thing. The man sat in the chair on the left-hand side would not have gone about those balls in that way. He wouldn't have left those two until last, I'm certain. I think he would have left one of them, though. I think he would have left the one on oh, the left-hand side. He, he, yeah. would have left, he would have left one, but he wouldn't have, uh, have left, left the, yeah. those as his last two balls. Yeah. There should be some great games there. Another super weekend. So, the first mistake, the in-off from McHill. Yeah, straight in-off, so you've got to call that one a, a mistake for sure. Should cost him a frame. The way Mark Allen has started, you'd expect him to make light work of these. got this cue ball on a string now. Just as I say that. That's a proper commentator's curse there. <laughs> right just, in between. He's perfect. just finished him right in between. The good news is the eight ball's hanging over the pocket. So yeah. He had a huge margin of error. And the pattern of the match continues. Another crunching break. Cue ball right up the middle of the table. Acknowledged there by Mikhail as well. And look at this leaf. Take your pick. Yellows or reds, but I think he's going to go yellows. Yellows would have been my choice too. Much more open. Just they connect better than the reds because the reds left and at the bottom of the table don't really connect by anything. So that's what you're always looking for when you first approach the table is um, not just the uh, layout of the table and which are the easier ball sets. It's, it's sometimes about how they connect as well can play a big influence yeah are there any problems how do you solve the problems and how do you connect the dots up
And there's another one. So both players now needing five further frames to win this first set. First set. Just such a, a huge psychological advantage. You know that you're guaranteeing yourself at minimum a six red shootout and puts you in the driving seat. We saw Mark Allen against Luke Gilbert earlier today, which went to uh, seven frames each in a decider, which Mark came through. And that threw the game into an entirely different complexion where he breezed through the second set to find himself in this final. A little shake of his head there. Just wasn't exactly where he wanted to be with the cue ball. It looks like he's going to be leaving the two in the top end as his last two balls. So he needs to be fairly straight in on the one to the top left to then get on the one to the top right, his last ball. Eight ball does come to the pocket. He's uh, just played that one in. I don't, I don't like leaving this until last. There's so much that can go wrong. Mm. Not happy because he's not quite as straight as he'd like. He can still pop this yellow and get on the other one, but he's going to be high on it or low on it, depending on which way you look at it. He's uh, going to be going into the, the red, leaving a, a very tricky eight ball here because of this. He could use the red just to change the angle slightly, which is what he's done. Using the red over the pocket. He's still got to play around with that red, though. He's still yeah. low of straight. Yeah. Whatever he leaves, he's going to leave a, a, a long eight ball. Now, this is a tester. Wow, showing his prowess with the cue and showing why he is uh, a professional snooker player. Two, I think two of the semis have gone to the, the shootout in terms of a set all, but the majority of these two set matches get won by the player that wins the first set. Wow, that red towards the top left pocket was tracking. If you watch that red, it's tracking straight into the pocket and the cue ball gets in the way of it and kicks it out and the result is a dry break yeah Mick needs to do something with his break maybe go back to what he was using this afternoon in terms of move across to more central he's had five breaks so far he's fouled twice one of them was him going straight in off as well uh, dry twice and just the once where he made a ball I'm looking at this table and all I can see is five yellows over the pocket <laughs> And Mark's electing to go reds. I mean, <laughs> and you can't argue with his choice either, really, no, because of the eight ball. I know. It's just amazing, isn't it? Look, I mean, there's <laughs> one, two, three, four, five yellows hanging over the back, and the other two are just sat there. And as you say, the eight balls in a in a cluster of reds. The reds are infinitely more difficult. Are you at all surprised that he's he's just he's not, not ta taking the yellows there, knowing that he's he can try and develop that eight ball? Not really, because the eight ball is is a tricky one to to develop, and you can see the way he's working these out. It's not as though the reds themselves don't have pockets. He's uh he's worked these out actually beautifully. Okay, he's a he's actually a roll short there, which means he, he was playing for the right by the eight ball into the right centre next. He wanted to be almost straight in on this one. Now he's really going to have to nip this one uses the yellow as well that's lovely so he, even though it looked a lot trickier on reds I still I think it was probably a good well he's going to take them out so yeah. it's definitely a good choice yep. he wants nothing to do with it so he just turns it back over You heard that little beep in the background. Next shot played. We'll go into 15 seconds a shot, part of the match. 
15 seconds a shot for the final 10 minutes. The fact that Mick left that red on is really dangling the carrot because there is actually only one bad red on the table. So it is somewhat risky. I think he was really hoping to tie up the red at the top of the table. Mark's not landed on the next ball, so decided just to pull back as well. Yeah, both players have used their extensions, so we're going to see quick fire action. They have to make fast decisions. That red is not an easy red to develop. Developer, he has. He needs one more good shot. Drop this red into the centre pocket, find himself position. And from nowhere, I mean, that ready potted to middle, sending the cue ball at the top of the table. He needed a bit of luck, and uh, as they say, you make your own luck. And he got it. He has played some great developing shots over the last couple of days and that was up there with any of them super clearance and the first step of the ladder oh he misses the pot along the rail along the bottom cushion he was playing the cannon on the eight ball because he wanted to leave the angle on the other one at the bottom of the table to then get perfectly on the one on the left hand side but that's a big miss and the way this match has gone and look at the way these yellows are laid out. That could be massive for Mick Hill. That really could. He may not play another shot in this set. His first miss of the whole set. And it comes at a pivotal moment. That's a super shot. Mark took all of the clock there. He knew how important that was. And you've not really seen him get down and cue a ball that many times. But he knew how important. Knew he had to make it. Oh, 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 wow, just flicks that near jaw, stays on the table. No emotion shown at all from either player there. That was a big moment. Mark Allen, two pots away from taking this to a deciding frame. And remember, Mark will have the break. What a twist. Oh, that's quite incredible, incredible, isn't it? What a set of pull we've seen here. He's in complete control of the match. Obviously, it's still a long way to go in this set, and it can swing round, but he'll be feeling very comfortable. And he wouldn't have been 10 minutes or so ago. Big chance now for Mark Allen to get going in this set. He's a broken really nicely for him. Only question mark for me is the red nearest the right centre. Does that slide in the middle pocket comfortably enough, or...? or not looks like it's right on the knuckle can take it long he's got the long plant if he has to yeah enough angle to put the screw out and, uh, yeah just going to be a little bit hampered on the one up the right hand side so he's just looking at the one over the left middle pocket decided to take the hamper queuing on 
because he doesn't have to do anything. You can just drop it in and uh, drop the red to middle. And the black is waiting at his mercy, so he breaks stride in the second set. A fourth straight break clearance to start the, the set. Yeah, it doesn't get any better. Another super break. <laughs> Just saying it time and time again, but it really is. Look at this. How do you how do you find the sweet spot? Just <laughs> it's brilliant. It really has been, hasn't it? Or it, it is, it's not a case of he's just found it for this match. He's been breaking like this the whole weekend long. The, the quality of his game after the break is ramped up today. Uh, but the break itself has been there the whole weekend through. It's been an absolute treat to have him here and playing it. See him play, playing at this level. And he's a long way back into this match, but he's going to try and make it start here. Maybe a shade closer to the object ball than he originally wanted, but he plays at a great pace and gives it every chance to to go in. That's a, a good, quick clearance. These yellows look really nice. Looks like he's eyeing up the reds, though, which also look really nice. Yeah. Yeah, my initial instinct was, um, was yellow, and then I looked at the reds and thought, well... They're pretty good because these three at the top of the table, um, they, they connect to one another. And then you've got the ball on the left-hand side, which then lends position to the one on the right. So that's a good angle. Sort of feel his... Second shot, he could have played a better positional shot onto the one on the left-hand side. Yeah, I, I don't think for a second that that was um, Harry initially yeah. was going to go about these. Uh, I think he was leaving the one he's just taken, and this red would have been his last ball. So he missed position on the one on the left-hand side and now has to go back up for it. He's navigated it really well, though. He's just got a lot of traffic in the middle of the table to get onto this eight ball. Needs to cue this really well. That's a beautiful shot. That really is delightful cueing. That's lovely.